Good morning everyone and welcome to the manse of Port Glasgow New Parish Church. We join together this morning on Sunday the 6th of September at 11am and I welcome you wherever you may be joining us from today. I also welcome you if you're a visitor with us today, we're delighted that you're with us. Um, if you've got the time, please say hello in the comments section. We can look out for that and say hello back. Um, of course it's different online, we've got no idea who's watching, who's new. Um, of course we would know if, if you walked into the church. But um, So if you've got the time then please do say hello in the comments section and we'll have a wee look out um, for your comment. Um, so yes, welcome everyone to our service this morning online, on Facebook and on our YouTube channel. Few intimations, first one is uh, church and opening. So you might have heard that a few uh, local congregations, Church of Scotland's, have decided that they're going to open again, either opening today or um, opening the next few weeks. We're not there yet. Um, I don't know how you feel about that. You might agree with us. You might be a bit frustrated and you really want to get back, but we're not there yet. Um, there's lots of restrictions. Uh, we had been originally waiting for phase four of the government route map, which states that mass gatherings can come together again, but um, I think that's going to be much longer um, than what we first thought because of what's going on in Glasgow and the Renfrewshire Councils and what's happened in Aberdeen. Um, so I think phase four is going to be um, a wee while yet. I don't know, I could be wrong. Um, so that's what we were originally waiting on, but there is lots of restrictions. If we were to open the church again, less than 50, you would have to book to come to church. You would have to book in. You'd have to wear a face mask. You're not allowed to sing. You'd have to be, you know, separated. Uh, there'd be a one-way system. There would be floor stickers and posters. It, it's a lot. There's a, there's a lot you need to do. And then when the service is over, the whole place needs cleaned. Um, and you're not allowed to, like, the... I think it's, like, the, the pew cushions. and it, The list basically goes on and on. There's, like, a 42-page list of things you would need to do. So we've decided for the moment that we're going to remain closed. Uh, we're going to remain online. I appreciate that's frustrating for people that don't have access to Wi-Fi or, you know, our online services. I, I completely get it. Um, but for the moment, we're going to remain closed and we're going to remain online. Um, as you know, we're also trying to get cameras down at the church so we can do live streaming. Um, because this is the thing, if I suddenly decided that, okay, we're going to open the church in the next two weeks, and I go back to the church to take the service for the less than 50 that show up, I couldn't do the online service. You know, so we've built up a really good online community. Um, you know, there's some new people watching. We've got people who've moved to the area who want to come to the church. Um, I can't do both, you know, so I think this is the way we're thinking. Um, you know, it means that when we finally get back to the church, we've also got the live streaming, so we've got the two of those. Um, but at the moment, it just takes far too long when you think of the online services, um, you know, it might look, you know, you watch them for 40 minutes and you think, mm, okay, but there's a lot involved in them. So um, the editing and, you know, trying to get the, the hymns from somewhere on YouTube, uh, it, it takes a long time, uh, especially uploading to Facebook and YouTube. So um, at the moment, this is where we're at. Um, we are going to remain closed, but we'll obviously keep you updated. And there's another government announcement coming, I think it's on the 10th of September. So we will keep you updated and I hope you understand why we are not opening at the moment. Okay. Next one is just the Inverclyde Faith and Through Care. We spoke about it last week. We There was a video at the end of the service. If you are interested in that, then please do let me know. Um, it's supporting people who have been in prison and people who are coming out back into the community, but they want to turn their lives around. They, you know, they want to change. They want to do something different and are looking for volunteers, but they're also looking for trustees uh, to be on the board as well. There's training involved in that, so you will be trained. And you know, it's absolutely fine if you go along and you think this is not for me, then that's okay. Um, or if you want to give Karen a phone, I can get your contact details. She can explain and then you might say, you know, that's not for me or it is. Um, but we're really, really looking for people in the Port Glasgow area because we don't have any, they don't have any volunteers for the Port Glasgow area. Um, so yes, it's supporting people that come out of prison uh, who are wanting to really, you know, turn their lives around, get back into the community again. So if you're interested, do let me know. And the last one is ministry. So 
If you're interested in becoming a minister with the Church of Scotland, whether that be full-time, part-time or you know, whatever it may be, um, then please do let me know if you feel that God is calling you into ministry. Then there is a couple of what's called webinars coming up. Um, there's some online sort of conferences coming up uh, that you might be interested in. Um, you might want to go along to those and to think about ministry. So again, there's no pressure if you go to that and you suddenly think, this is not for me, then that's what they're about. So if you are interested in becoming a minister with the Church of Scotland, then please do let me know and I'll pass you the details. That is all of our intimations for this morning. So let us worship God. How shall we live in the love of God? Well, of course, by treating one another with fairness and dignity. How shall we witness God's forgiving love? By reaching out to others with compassion. So come, let us worship the God who has always loved us. Let our worship of God be reflected in our lives of hope and peace. We begin our service today by singing or listening along to our first hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Good morning boys and girls, it is always fantastic when you come to join us for our service. Thank you for tuning in, thank you for taking part. As you know we always start our time together don't we by either high five, fist bump. I think last week, um, was it fist bump last week? You're probably all shouting at the television, it was, it was high five last week. No, I think it was fist bump last week, so this week we'll do a high five, okay? Now remember what we do is this. Now you might be new, if you are new, welcome, um, it's gl glad that you've joined us today. Um, so what we do is we hold out our hand like this, um, so maybe you're watching on a television or on a laptop or on a mobile phone and you hold out your hand and then after three we do this together, All right? So it's like a virtual high five, okay? Um, so we'll give that a wee try and remember, gentle now, uh, I don't want any bills for televisions or laptops or because you've just went, boo, 
too hard. So, okay, we'll give this a try, right? So after three, one, two, three. There you go. A virtual high five. Excellent. I hope that you're doing well. I hope that you are enjoying school. I'm sure it's all kind of different at the moment, um, but I hope that's going well. Um, we certainly miss you. I miss seeing you face to face. So I do hope you're watching and you're taking part and joining in. Um, so today, what we're thinking about is we're thinking about the word um, love. So as we know, as we're told all the time in the Bible and the Bible tells us and we, we hear from like talks like this that God loves each and every one of us. But what we're also asked to do is to go out and show our love to others. So I wonder how does that look? You know, what does that look like? How do we show our love to other people? What kind of things um, could we do? So I wonder if you just have a wee think for just a wee second. How can you show love to others? God loves you and we have to go out, you know, enter communities or wherever it may be and show love to other people. So how do we do that, do you think? Okay, so there's lots of different ways we can show love to other people. Um, and, you know, it doesn't need to be really hard. You know, it doesn't need to be hard. It can be, it could be simple things. Um, you know, it could be you going out in the street and helping someone across the road. It could be you're out shopping with your mum and dad and you see someone drop something and it could be, you know, you drop this. Um, it could be noticing in school that someone's sad and rather than ignoring the fact that they're sad and they're maybe crying or they look quite upset or they're not really playing with anyone, they're kind of, they're on their own. It might be just a case of saying, everything alright? How are you? My name is? Do you know that kind of thing? That's showing love to someone. Um, it could be just something simple. It could be you maybe out with your mum or dad or whoever it is you live with and you're in the supermarket and you know simply just walk around and say hello, good morning, good afternoon, how are you? That kind of thing. That's really simple because you never know. Someone that you say that to could be having the worst week. They'd be having a really really bad day and just that simple wee hello, how are you could make their day, it could make their week. So I wonder, I'm going to challenge you to that actually. This week, if you're out and about, wherever you may be, you're walking along the street with your, your parents or your guardians or whoever it may be, or you're out shopping, um, or you're in Port Glasgow Town Centre, what I want you to do is, everybody you see is just to say, hello, or good morning, or good evening, or whatever it may be, and I wonder what reaction you'll get, okay? So you think you might give that a try? Just go by people and say, hello, good morning, how are you, hiya. I've started to do it. Um, I walk around Port Glasgow Town Centre and just say, good morning, hello, how are you? Um, so, there's a wee challenge for you. Maybe you want to give that a wee try, see how that goes. But it's showing love for others. These are kind of the examples, and I'm sure you've got many other examples as well. And if your, your mum or dad or your grand grandpa wants to share that with us, they can put it in the comment section. It's a way of showing love to other people. And um, by showing love to others, then you hope it's like a ripple effect. So you hope then that person thinks, oh, I could be that way. And I'm going to go and show love to others as well when it kind of builds and grows and grows. Because there's many stories out there of people who've, you know, someone's shown love to them and then they've sort of managed to turn their life around and change and then they've thought, I'm now going to do the same. I'm going to show love to someone else. And it's like a ripple effect. Now, I wonder if you've heard that before or do you know what a ripple effect is? Now, here's a perfect example for you, right? Now, I've got here... What is that, like a wee pebble or something? And I've got water here. Maybe not a good idea because it's next to my laptop, so we'll see how this goes. Um, I've got water here. I'm just going to move the camera so that you can see, all right? Um, here we go. Now, hopefully this works, all right? So this is the pebble. So this is us, okay? And this is the water, and watch what happens. Are right, you ready? Yep. So... Hopefully you can have saw that. It's hard to see when it's on camera, but um, so what happens is it's a ripple effect. So it grows and it grows and it grows. So it's kind of hard to show you on camera. It depends on the quality of the camera. It might not have worked as well. But it's that kind of when you put something like a, so maybe try it. Get a bowl. Um, you get like a wee pebble or get like a stone or something like that and plop it into the water. And you'll see the water 
just sort of that ripple ripple effect and it's kind of like the idea that's what i'm trying to trying to say to you is that if you go out and you show love to others then it might someone else make things you know what i'm going to do that too and then it grows and it grows and it grows and what a world we would live in if each and every one of us showed love to each other it'd be such a great place to be so that's what we're thinking about today we're thinking about the word love and we're thinking about how we have to show love to others so remember that god loves you and you then for to go and show love to others and hopefully that grows and grows and grows and other people um, do exactly the same so we are now going to listen to our children's song or you know if you want you can sing along it is let me just see it is this little light of mine This is the light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine This is the light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine This is the light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine And now we come to our scripture reading this morning. And remember, if you'd like to take part in our Sunday morning services, then please do um, drop me a message and let me know. If you want to read the Bible, for example, um, all I need you to do is just video yourself what like I'm doing now and send me the video and I can um, edit it into our service. So please do let me know. Uh, this morning's scripture reading comes from Romans. Uh, Romans chapter 13, reading from verses 8 to 10. So Romans chapter 13 reading from verses 8 to 10 and it's entitled love fulfills the law 
Let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be, are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbour. Therefore, love is a fulfilment of the law. Amen and thanks be to God for the reading of his holy word. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Saviour and our Redeemer. Amen. When Paul wrote this letter that we've just heard to the Romans in the capital city of the Roman Empire, love must have been what was lacking in that empire. The people at the time lived under the control of a military machine and a cruel, relentless emperor. They needed desperately to learn how to love and how to display love amidst the pressure and oppression of that day. This was what was needed in the city of Corinth, the city from which Paul wrote the letter to the Romans. In the midst of seeking after merriment and pleasure, the Corinthians needed to learn the gift of love. Love is absolutely needed not just in this country, but right throughout the world as we speak. The greatest need today is to learn the secret of how to love. Love would, of course, make a difference. Listen again to what Paul says in Romans chapter 13, 8 to 10. Let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be, are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbour. Therefore, love is the fulfilment of the law. Can you imagine if we had the opportunity to teach people how to love again? So if we had the opportunity to teach people how to love again, would we fight in wars like we do now? I don't think we would. Think of how much energy and money is being spent in keeping up this endless array of armour, for example, simply because we can't trust people to love one another. If we could love each other, well, there wouldn't be any crime. How good would that be? The streets would be safe to walk once more, and in all the great cities of our land you would feel safe and secure. If only people would learn to love. Of course, if there wasn't any crime, you wouldn't need prisons. All the money we spend on prisons could be spent on something more useful. And then, of course, you wouldn't need any courts of law or police. But at the moment, we need all these things currently because we can't simply love one another. And our biggest problem is our lack of love, our inability to love one another. Everything we know in life revolves around that problem. The passage is telling us that we have the ability to love. If we are Christians, if we know Jesus Christ, we have the power to love. There is no doubt about that. If you know him, then you have the power to love. You don't have to ask for it, because you've got it. If you have Christ, you have the ability to act in love, even though you're tempted not to. That is the whole issue. Therefore, Paul says, when you come up against people, when you rub shoulders with them, remember that your first obligation is to love them, to act in love. Show courtesy, kindness, patience, understanding. Whatever it takes, whatever is demanded, you can show that. And I wonder what kind of radical things would start happening among us if we were to start 
living on this basis. Every day, every person we would meet, we would say to ourselves first, I need to show some love to this person, no matter what else happens. Paul reminds us that we have an obligation to love everyone. Love your neighbour. Well, who is your neighbour? When we think of the word neighbour, we perhaps think immediately of the people who live on each side of us. They are, of course, they are neighbours. But it includes everyone. The people sitting next to you now, or who you would have been sitting next to in normal circumstances at church, are our neighbours. And so are the people that we meet in work and in our shopping, people we pass on the street, some we might perhaps try to avoid for whatever reason, we kind of touched on that a few weeks ago. Wherever we are, the people we make contact with are living right beside us and they are our neighbours for that moment. The word to us is that since we have the ability to love, we are to love our neighbours as ourselves. Glory be to the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
We now come to our prayers for ourselves and for others. And as always, there'll be a moment of silence within um, today's prayer. That moment of silence is there for your own personal prayer. Perhaps there's something going on in your own life at the moment or in the lives of someone you know and love. Maybe it's something you've seen in the news this week. Um, perhaps there's just you've just had such a busy and hectic week. There's been just been so much going on, so much going through your head that you just want to take that moment to just stop, to be still, to be quiet and to pray and to reflect. As a parish church, we've had four uh, funerals this week. Two of those have been members, two of those have been parish. So we keep those families and we keep anyone who's been bereaved um, in our thoughts and in our prayers. So let us join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, you call us to love with all our hearts and minds and soul. You challenge us to love our neighbour as ourselves. Lord, we come to you in love this morning with our prayers for others. We pray for our church family here at New Parish Church. We pray for our friends in this congregation, for those friends who have perhaps moved away, those who are confined to their homes, cared for in nursing homes, and those who are unwell at home or in hospital. We pray for our brothers and sisters in all of the churches within our town, striving through everything they say and do to make known the love of Christ in our community. We pray for the church throughout the world. We think especially of those who are persecuted for their beliefs, all for whom a commitment to Christ is dangerous and costly. We pray for the unity of the church, for the breaking down of barriers and the further growing together. And we pray also for the witness of your people everywhere, that through their life and service, your love will be made known, your word proclaimed and your kingdom brought closer. Lord, in a moment of silence, we now take this opportunity to pray to you our, our own personal prayers for those this week who are on our hearts and on our minds. Lord, hear these our prayers, for we ask them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. We now bring our service to a close this morning. Uh, I want to thank you again for tuning in to our online services. Uh, I'll be back this evening at 7 o'clock. We meet for our evening prayer together. Um, a reminder that next week is Communion Sunday, um, and that will be taken from the church itself. And again, it will still be online, so if you want to, if you can, um, if you've got some wine or a bit of bread or a roll or whatever it may be, or maybe you've got some juice, um, to join us for Communion Sunday, which will be next week. And like I say, I'll take that um, down at the church. Please do um, join us for that. So we bring our service to a close this morning, and we close our service with a well-known and a favourite, it's Shine, Jesus Shine.
Jesus Christ has been poured out to you. Now go into the world, bringing hope, forgiveness and peace to others. God's peace is with you always. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you and those whom you share life's journey with. This day and forevermore.